This is the issue, and I am the ghetto man. Today's issue, the second plank of the Communist Manifesto, a heavy and progressive graduated income tax. Don't go away. We'll be right back. I think everyone in America knows what an income tax is. We deal with it every year. And if we don't, the IRS will come and take our property away, right? Well, where did our income tax laws come from anyway? Well, if you ask most people, they would say that our income tax law is derived from the 16th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, which reads... The Congress shall have the power to lay and collect taxes on income from whatever source derived, without apportionment among the several states, and without regard to any census or enumeration. Well, that sounds like a, an income tax law to me. Or is it? Just when did the 16th Amendment become part of our Constitution? Well, it became part of our Constitution in 1913. Kinda, but not really. Why? Well, it wasn't ratified by three-fourths of the states as mandated by the U.S. Constitution. And if that's true, how did it become part of our Constitution? Well, the truth is it became part of our Constitution through fraud. Public record clearly shows that Philander Chase Knox, who was Secretary of State between 1909 and 1913, falsified records in order to secure the ratification of the 16th Amendment. It's that simple. The actual state count failed to meet the three-fourths requirement of the ratification of the amendment as mandated by the U.S. Constitution. But that didn't matter to good old Philander Chase Knox because he certified that the amendment had been ratified anyway. So that's how the 16th Amendment made its way into our Constitution, kind (laughs) of. Well, to prove this fact, two men, Bill Benson and Red Beckman, painstakingly went to every state in the Union and obtained certified copy of the state's ratification documents. Lo and behold the states had not met the three-fourths approval requirement as mandated by the Constitution. So, in reality, in fact, the 16th Amendment had not been ratified, and without the ratification, there is no law. Benson and Beckman, you know, they took this issue to court, and it was the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals in San Francisco that ruled that it wasn't a legal question but a political question instead. What? People go to jail for not paying their taxes, right? Of course, when this is brought to Congress, what does Congress claim? It claims that's a political question instead of a legal one. And so that's where it is today. It's been sandbagged by both the courts and Congress. And it's just not talked about anymore. It's just as if the fraud never occurred. Now, all of this information can be found in their well-researched and well-documented books, The Law That Never Was, Volume 1 and 2, The Fraud of the 16th Amendment, and The Personal Income Tax. And these are both by Bill Benson and M.J. Red Beckman. I will include this information in the comments section below. Now, what's interesting to note is that the Federal Reserve Act was passed in 1913 as well, creating a central bank, just like the fifth plank of the Communist Manifesto calls for. Now, is that coincidence? Well, we'll cover that subject when we take a look at the fifth plank in another show. So getting back to the 16th Amendment, assuming that the 16th Amendment had been ratified, and it is the law of the land, what new taxing authority did it give Congress under it? Well, according to the Supreme Court, the 16th Amendment did not grant Congress any new taxing powers. So the amendment 
assuming that it was ratified and it's legal, it did nothing. The taxing powers that the Constitution granted to Congress from the very beginning when the Constitution was uh, first adopted are the same now as they were before the 16th Amendment was, I don't know, ratified, not ratified, I don't know what you call it, before the fraud, okay? Well, this ruling can be found in a Supreme Court case called Brushaver versus Union Pacific Railroad Company. It's in Book 240, U.S., page 1, and it's a 1916 case. It's really worth reading. In fact, I'll go ahead and put, uh, I'll cite this case in the comment section as well. So, no matter how you look at it, the 16th Amendment is not law, period. So, how come, if the 16th Amendment was never ratified, it's not law, how come we're all paying an income tax? Well, the short answer to that question is the IRS is nothing more than a collection agency for the privately owned Federal Reserve banking system. Its job, its primary job, is to collect the interest on our national debt. And it does so through Title 26, the Internal Revenue Code. So, today, we all pay a heavy progressive graduating income tax, and we pay that tax for one reason and one reason only, and that's to service the national debt. Not one penny collected by the IRS goes to anything but the national debt, and that information can be found in a report, and that report's called the Grace Commission Report, which I'm going to read an excerpt from. Quote, 100% of what is collected is absorbed solely by interest on the federal debt. All individual income tax revenues are gone before one nickel is spent on the services taxpayers expect from government, unquote. Grace Commission Report, submitted to President Ronald Reagan, January 15th, 1984. So uh, if all the money that's collected by the IRS goes to interest, how does the federal government pay its bills? It borrows more, plus interest. Okay, uh, I'll put a link for the Grace Commission report in the uh, comment section as well. Okay, what is a heavy progressive graduated income tax anyway? Well, the definition goes like this. A system of taxation in which persons or corporations are assessed at a greater percentage of their income according to the theoretical ability to pay. That is, taxpayers pay more in taxes if they earn more in income. For example, taxpayers may be 25% of their income in taxes up to a certain amount and 35 of everything earned over that amount. This is the tax system, the exact tax system that is found in U.S. Code Title 26, the Internal Revenue Code today. Now, it's interesting to note that Title 26 does not contain an implementing statute defining who is made liable under the law. And that statute has to be there. The person reading the law has to know who is made liable. And another thing that is interesting is that nowhere in the code does it define the word income. The Federal Reserve Banking System, through its inflationary fiat monetary system, plus interest, creates the illusion that prices are rising when, in fact, it's the value of the currency that's going down. Now, in order to compensate for the devaluation in the currency, prices have to rise. And along with prices rising, each of us has to earn more money in order to compensate for the currency devaluation as well. Everyone needs more money to buy the same amount of goods and services that we did before the Fed inflated it. Okay, here's the catch. The IRS only taxes the amount written on the note. The IRS does not care that you lost buying power when the Fed inflated the currency. As far as the IRS is concerned, it's the face value of the note that's taxed. On its face, you are earning more money, right? Even though in actuality, you are earning less because the note is worth less. Taxing the face value of the note will put you in a higher tax bracket, so you're going to be taxed more when in actuality you are earning less. Progressive, or should I say communist.
Same thing. It's all an illusion. It's an illusion designed to steal all of your money and to steal all of your property, just like the second plank of the Communist Manifesto calls for. And not one person in 100,000 understands it. You see, there is no constitutional authority for a heavy and progressive graduated income tax in this country. The 16th Amendment is not law. And because it's not law, Title 26 cannot be law. The IRS has no authority to enforce an unconstitutional code on anyone. Every man, woman, and child in this country that is paying an income tax because there's no law is doing so voluntarily. Just think about that for a minute. The income tax, if it has any validity at all, is only a tax on profits and gains, not labor and wages. It is a tax on incomes from whatever source derived. And the key word of the law is from. It's not an income tax on sources. It's income taxes derived from a source. Income is derived from profit and gains. The source, capital, is the money that you earn. Take that capital, invest it in stocks. The stocks are now your source. The dividends from those stocks are income derived from the source the stocks being the source. And the only thing that is taxed is the income that is derived from it. It's that simple. The U.S. Constitution forbids a direct, unapportioned tax on wages and salaries of American citizens. Labor and wages can never be profit and gain. It's an exchange. Quid pro quo, which is Latin for substance for substance. You give up your time, and you receive something of value for it. That's not income, it's just an equal exchange. In the first 134 years, the United States of America became the most powerful and prosperous nation on the face of the earth since King Solomon. We were number one in just about everything. And we did it all on the collection of duties, imposts, and excise taxes. You see, the authority that grants Congress's taxing powers can be found in Article 1, Section 8 of the United States Constitution, which states to lay and collect taxes, duties, imposts, and excises. Now, Article 1, Section 8, Clause 1 states, all duties, imposts, and excises shall be uniform throughout the United States and to the limitations of Article 1, Section 2, Clause 3, that direct taxes shall be apportioned among the several states and of Article 1, Section 9, Clause 4, that no capitation or other direct tax shall be laid unless portioned to the census or enumerations here and before directed to be taken, unquote. Okay, this is the law dealing with taxation. This is the law as it stands today, the constitutional authority. Now remember, even if the 16th Amendment had been ratified, As the Supreme Court of the United States said, it did not change anything constitutionally concerning Congress's power to tax. In 1900, if you had suggested that one day in the United States, the government would be taxing Americans on their wages, you would have been laughed at and called a communist pinko pig for even suggesting such a stupid, ridiculous idea. Today, every working man, woman, and child in America practices the second plank of the Communist Manifesto, and they practice it just like the Communist Manifesto calls for. And if you don't, all of your property will be confiscated, and your ass will be thrown in jail. I am the Ghetto Man. Thank you for watching. And remember, if you're politically correct, then you're legally wrong. And if you're not part of the solution then you are the problem. Please subscribe and please share.